Okay, now we're going to look into a new article. It's from last year, and uh, it shows that uh, they are finding the exacting alleles that are associated with Neanderthal DNA, and after pinpointing them down uh, and the associated ones, uh, they've def decided and figured out that uh, even Africans have Neanderthal DNA. And, of course, we know the North African Caucasians and Egyptians that were endemic to the area already had it, but they're saying it spreads a little bit farther than that. And uh, kind of worries me because the article here is done by Clyde Winters. I don't know if you can make that out there. But uh, Clyde Winters is a negrocentric person that I've debunked a couple of times. If it's the same one. Maybe someone with the same name. But uh, the one I'm speaking of uh, has made videos where he says that the ancient Greeks, the ancient Etruscans, uh, Vikings, just about anybody, Minoans and so on, were all negroids and stuff and so you know it's kind of, kind of foolish almost like the uh, real history www.com that we tore apart here recently in a large series but uh and i may visit clyde again here shortly because uh, people keep sending it to me like oh he, he look at what he says now but uh most of these videos are somewhat elder and it's just totally debunked it's kind of disgusting and, and racist that things like this would come out um but you can see the depiction of this uh, and there are quite a few depictions of Neanderthal. Uh, this one has blonde hair and uh, blue-gray eyes, uh, kind of like Genghis Khan is supposed to uh, have, uh, have and things, and almost has this aztec -y type appearance and so on, but you see a large variation on recreations of these. Uh, some of them look very much like Chuck Norris. There's a lot of them. They notice that they have the lighter hair genes and red hair gene definitely connected to them, and so some of them are done with a reddish-haired uh, gene that's connected to them. You can still see some prognathism and so on that's associated with them. Uh, but uh, at the end of this reign, when we run into Caucasians and what would end up being Cro-Magnon man, you'll see that as being modern man. I think he even makes a dis uh, discrepancy of that here shortly. So let's get into this. Uh, the Widespread Appearance of Neanderthal DNA, Africans Have It Too by Clyde Winters. It has long been argued that Neanderthal-derived DNA is found in all non-Africans. Well, no, I think it was always stated that it was in all non-Negroids, that it was in all Caucasians, and so North Africans would, of course, not fall under that. So we're going to have that through this article, probably with Clyde, but uh, that he, you know, that has this idea that all... Uh, Africa was somehow cut off at the corner right there at, uh, and it was all black people or something but you know Caucasians can live primordially all the way around the uh, Mediterranean in fact the uh, Jibal Arud site shows the people living there now 315,000 BC and it's a uh, homo sapiens so what we would consider to be a modern human and it's the Caucasoid form uh, contains Neanderthal DNA and I think he mentions that so when we say all non-Africans, it's really non-Negroids. As a result, it has been assumed that Africans fail to carry Neanderthal ancestry. Well, I think I just explained that in what we call African. But anyhow, even though Neanderthal skeletons have been found in North Africa at Jebel Irhud and Hoafate. Now, he spells it wrong. It's Irhud but, uh, instead of Ighud. But, uh, and I think if you take the, the normal Berber people, you can get a few more letters in that thing. But anyhow, uh, so yeah, uh, the, they're found there, but then there's a Homo sapiens that have been found there that looks like it predates the Neanderthal thing. So this is uh, real interesting, and I did a video about it in, uh, just, just recently, and I've probably mentioned it a few times too. The percentage of Neanderthal ancestry in Africans. He says, the idea that Africans fail to carry Neanderthal DNA has recently been proven as wrong. Mark Haber, a British geneticist from the uh, Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute in Hingston, has found that the Taubu in Chad and the Amhara in Ethiopia carry Neanderthal genes. Whereas Eurasians carry 2% Neanderthal ancestry, these Ethiopians carry 1% Neanderthal ancestry. Well, they have a high admix, Caucasian admix, so that just makes sense. But And it's a recent thing, too. That in fact, the Ethiopians that are there are somewhat recent to the area in, in comparison. But anyhow, um, whereas Eurasians carry 2% Neanderthal, Ethiopians carry 1%, and Central Africans carry about 0.5% Neanderthal ancestry, 
now. And I believe he's trying to say Africans as Negroids and all of these uh, percentages here as opposed to Caucasians that are endemic to North and East Africa and all the way through the Horn. If you'll just look at the definition of Caucasian, it'll say that. Everybody wants to say, oh, you were just living around some mountains. And no, no, that was kind of a name given them to them for a holotype skeleton they found way back when. People want to try to use that in a strange, strange way. Haber maintains that Africans who carry Neanderthal DNA show gene flow from Eurasians. The detectable Neanderthal DNA in Africans is found among Africans that carry the R1B haplogroup. Ta-da! So here is the influx. Um, there's a few nice articles there, and I'm probably going to hit on one of those here shortly, and I think two of them somewhat go together, and one has to do with this. Um, and so here we see another depiction of what a uh, Neanderthal would look like, and you can see in here it has a little more of that Chuck Norris appearance and stuff to them. Neither one of these are the red-headed type forms to them, and they even show they had tattoos starting on their bodies at that time so on. But uh, Haber believes that the R1B haplogroup penetrated Central Africa via two migrations. So here's that back influx that we talk about a lot. The first migration he believes took place 6,000 years ago and the second migration around 3,000 years ago. That kind of correlates to the Khoisan article that I had here recently where Khoisans show an ancient Eurasian or Middle Eastern DNA influx at about that time. He says the major problem with this theory is that there's no archaeological evidence of a back migration from Eurasia to Africa. And uh, I think I just clarified that the sentence before. So we might get a little of that from Clyde. The discovery of Eurasian admixture among Africans is not a recent discovery. Pickerel and others estimated Eurasian ancestry among Africans from East and South Africa ranged from 2.5% to 50%. And Ethiopia is looked at right now, and Somalians, but Ethiopians mainly have about a 40% admix, and there are groupings inside of that group that have up to 50% admix. He goes on to mention that the Mande people carry 2% Eurasian admixture, so it's just a tiny amount, but this supports the original claim that the authors of the Moda article that I did one also on here recently, um, the claim that as much as 6 to 7 percent of the ancestry of West and Central African groups was Eurasian was not an error. And this is Clyde saying this. There are numerous populations in East, South, and West Africa that carry Eurasian admixture. The highest frequency of R1 is found in Western Eurasia. Cruciani and others claim that the pristine form of R1, M173, was found in Africa and the frequency of Y chromosomes, R1, M173, in Africa ranges between 7 to 95 percent. So there's a huge variation on who has and who doesn't and who mixed out of it and who kind of kept it in there going, it seems. And Kioa and others uh, said that R1M173 averages 39.5% in Africa, and I think he's talking about North African Berber populations and so on, but we continue. Our haplogroups are characterized by R1M207, M173 genetic backgrounds. The Eurasian R haplogroups in Africa include R1 M269, RV88, RL754, R1B1A, and RL278, which is also a R1B1. And uh, I don't profess to know this all about genetics, but I am making a uh, section for it in my videos that I have, and each one will have like uh, sections for it. I've already got them all delineated, and I now have one called Genetics Says. And so we're able to look at that. I look at mainly archaeology, symbology, and stuff. And once we go back to a certain point, we're really looking at pottery and cave art and things and, and uh, what people have thought about craniometry and so on. Now that we're able to get some genetics out of the situation, it really opens up the book that we were just looking at the cover on. So let's continue. Y chromosome V88 or R1B1A has its highest frequency among Chadic species, or Chadic, while the carriers are V88 among Niger Congo speakers, predominantly Bantus. 
range between 2 to 66 percent. And Cruciano uh, noticed this in 2010, Bernal Lee also in 2009, and others. Haplogroup VADH shows the mutations of M18, V35, and V7. Cruciani and others in 2010 revealed that RV88 is also carried by Eurasians, including the distinctive mutations M18, V35, and V7. So that shows an influx. Anyhow, haplogroup R1B1 is found in Africa at various frequencies. Bernal Lee and others in 2009 found that their study that 5.2 percent carried RB1 or RL278 variant. The frequency of R1B1 among the Bantu ranged from 2 to 20 percent. The barriers of R1B1 among the pygmy populations ranged from 1 to 25 percent. And this was noted by again Bernal Lee and others. The frequency of RL278 among Guinea-Bissau populations was 12 percent. The Tubal, Lal, and Sarah have frequencies between 20 and 34 percent of an RL754 variant uh, of R1B1A. Here's some people from uh, Bantu farmers near Cosmeo. And uh, so Neanderthal tools. Now Neanderthals used what's called Mousterian tools, and these are simple forms of flint chipping and so on off of them, but uh, and sharpened edges, obsidian, flints, things like that. These tools are also being used in Africa as early as 130,000 years ago. This place is Neanderthals in North Africa with that Caucasoid population that's there. There's a Green Sahara project that shows not a lot closer till now time too, whenever the Sahara was still green, the ancient Caucasians that had lived there. But the Neanderthal tools found at Jebel Irhud and Huafata resemble contemporaneous European Neanderthal tools. The presence of Mousterian tools suggests that Neanderthals mixed with Africans or Caucasian North Africans that were endemic because we know that anatomically modern humans were living in the area at the time. The North African Neanderthal people used the common Lavisio Mousterian toolkit which originally discovered in Europe. Kai Zerbo said that the Neanderthal skeletons came from Jebel Irud, and here he actually spells it differently, but right on the end, and El Guitar in Morocco. Later, Neanderthal people used the Altarian toolkit, and uh, that we know that's from way up north. It's also probably in Morocco that Neanderthal and Khoisan interacted. So now we have an attachment to my. Khoisan video that's gotten quite popular here. It's got like 30,000 videos on it all of a sudden. Most of them though are Negro cynics uh, just trying to attack me and not even any of the information that's brought to them by these amazing geneticists. Uh, this is kind of the Mousterian tools and flinting and stuff and you can see it but it's nowhere near arrowheads and things like that at that point with these type of tools. Carlton S. Kuhn, famous in the Living Races of Man in 1965, Anthropology A to Z in 1963, and the Races of Europe in 1939 claimed that the Khoisan had formerly lived in northern Africa from the Atlas Mountains down to the Feza and Sahel. Kuhn also said that the Dawood also looked like Hottentots. And we've discussed the ancient Hottentots too before. Other party, uh, partially Bushmen and partially Negroid people are also found in the Sahara. Kuhn maintains that the Horatian also include ancient South African Khoisan or Sac population elements. And I believe Kuhn here is referring to admixed people he's finding at that time, but at this point he didn't know the information we're talking about in other relations. Up until M. Gallego Lorente's Moda Man article and the Haber article, researchers claimed that Africans had no relations to the Neanderthals, but Prufer and others found that the Khoisan share more alleles with Altaic Neanderthal even than Denisovans. And Denisovans are a totally separate thing. Denisovans are related to the Fiji Islanders, Melanesians, uh, the southern part of India, and uh, uh, Australian Aborigines. So here we see something that's uh, one of the earlier depictions of what a Neanderthal might have looked like. Uh, now, he looks 
uh, very cavemanish, if you will, very hairy and so on. And, and you can see the variations of what people thought and now what they're realizing in modern more depictions of it. And then, of course, when the craniometry people get a hold of it, it doesn't look like this so much. But if you shaved up this guy, I still think I saw that guy at Home Depot a couple of weeks ago. Just got to shave him up. Anyhow, Haber has noted that uh, in Caucasians only have like 1 to 4% on an average, and it's believed that there are stronger forms in early North Africans through there. I believe 7P could probably confirm that. And the ancient Egyptians have a higher percent than what is out in other places. And that kind of makes sense that they were somewhat untouched and left alone in that one area, you know, as, as kind of it's shown. So, anyhow... Uh, Haber noted that derived DNA in all non-Africans is more closely related to Neanderthals from the Caucasus or Aldraic uh, or Alraic. It's I think it's Altaic Neanderthals. In the supplemental section of Proofer and others' work, there is considerable discussion of the relationship between Neanderthals and Khoisan. In relation to the Altaic Neanderthal, non-Africans have a lower divergence rate than Africans between 10 and 20 percent. Proofer and others in 2013 note uh, little statistical differences between non-African and African divergence. Hmm, strange little statement there, but um, so what we're also seeing is Altaic Neanderthals. Now here's one thing that I think we're gonna find and I think we've already found it but people aren't really expounding on it as much or going into depth about it it seems on most of these articles is that there are different, slight different Neanderthals too that we found that are a little bit different than each other and that shows you a variation on a theme there but then also the Caucasoids that run from there all the way up into the Mongol territories in China seem to have a little bit of a different variation and preemptive to that time the important one I think we'll find is Homo erectus where the African ones and the ones that didn't participate in the out of Africa situation had different hominids mixed in with them like a ghost species which we found now that they have like a Neanderthal that isn't in any of the other people that are up north and then due to some back influx which he's showing you here some of the people that had and had not quite had interaction had early primordial interaction also but it showed up in just a small percentage amounts anyhow um So, um, there's some neat articles here, too. Do the Neanderthals of Shanadar Cave really bury their dead? And I think I've already done that article here. Uh, I've done quite a few of them. Humans and Neanderthals branched off 600,000 years ago, and due to an incompatible Y chromosome, and I think this shows in that article what I was trying to say, uh, that they showed the uh, ancient light skin genes and alleles go back to this exact same dating here and in this right here was a divergence of mankind and light skin genes come from there and become supposedly a blanket over everywhere except for sub-Saharan Africa at somewhere around 60,000 BC they say and that really hardly contrasts to what Negro cynics say now and try to throw out from this one article back in the 80s I believe that said that um, blue eyes came from somebody about 6500 BC and therefore that's the first white man and everybody before that somehow had real real dark skin regardless of how any of that plays out those are the people that turned into the Caucasoids that now fly and went to space so it's the same situation but people want to try to say a lot of racial things now today and try to make people look more cocoa like uh, uh, they did to Cheddar Man here recently and tried to put mahogany shoe polish all over a guy and say that the uh, early Eurasians were dark like that and while a professional golfer or a uh, lifeguard will get to that color it's uh, kind of foolish for them to have done it within a week it was totally debunked but people still try to throw that out there for some reason anyhow an interesting find made by Proofer and others in 2013 was that all take Neanderthals and Denisovans are estimated to have similar split times this kind of goes into what I was saying. However, the divergence estimated for African Khoisan, Mandican, and Altaic is younger than the split between Africans and Indo-Sovans. That would have happened up over here. <coughs> Much more for, farther northeastern. The archaic individuals and modern African individuals. Um, 
and I'm going to let that go. The split times between the Khoisan and the Mandekan may be explained by the presence of AF24 haplotype in West Africa. Hmm. Uh, now they're trying to connect ancient things that I think may have a little bit of trouble getting connected. This is supposed to be some Khoisan village where they're cooking crickets, supposedly. Khoisan engaged in roasting grasshoppers. I was wrong. Uh, Puffer and others detected a relationship between Neanderthals and the Mandican. This is not surprising now that we know that the Mandican have 2% Eurasian ancestry, so they would get some of those alleles, a small percent. And um, this was uh, noted by Pickerel and others. And uh, I think we, we realized, too, that especially after people do DNA and me and tests like that, that um, all of the Negroids that are in America seem to have this uniform somewhere around 20% admix that's Caucasian and for years they've tried to say oh that was from the slave masters in this but it seems like they all have about there may be five or six different variations on a theme that are slight different on where it says that their combination comes from but in that fact it looks like there was only this type of interaction almost like there's a certain number of people or certain alleles that made into it that popped into it right there and that if you get somebody that had an admix above that, i.e. being with the slave master, they would have pretty much broken above 50% Caucasian admix because of that. And you still see a lot of that today, but then of course they breed black back with more black people. And so if you're you know at 54 and back with a black, you're going to be at what, 26 and a half of that is 30 something. And so you get all these variations and splits on a theme. But um, Anyhow, so yeah, this is um, done by Clyde Winters, and I really doubt it's the same guy, but opinion author, profile Clyde Winters, I'll look that up afterwards. If it is, I'll let you know. I'm not going to go to it now. In summary, though, diverse African populations carry Eurasian ancestry. Aha. Uh -huh. As a result, researchers will probably find more Africans that carry Neanderthal ancestry in the future. So it's funny on my videos that I do, black people like to hop up and down, get mad, and then try to call white people Neanderthals, which is strange, something that they have 1 or 4%, you know, admix from, from ancient, ancient times, but it's like they're trying to throw caveman at them whenever they say that, whenever all you really have to do is look at current Negroid populations that haven't been westernized, and there you have about the same level of development. But people don't want to talk about that in a modern world, in the Western world over here. We want to pretend that that doesn't exist. And blacks want to deny entirely. And it seems like it's odd, but here in the last generation or so, they've decided to say that they are Egyptians. They might even be people related to the Bible somehow, uh, but they aren't West Africans and the people that we see here. And a lot of the things they say are just showing blatant racism and somewhat ignorance to the truth of the way everything actually plays out. Genetics is showing us undeniable truth of how it plays out. We're still somewhat early in this, and so later you might find certain things that come out. That's how you get all this M da 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 and all these things broke out of it. It's things that they found now, and it's contained in here and contained in there, but not in here, but not in there. And they can trace things down. It takes a while before the web finally gets totally made, and then you look at it, and Charlotte's Web says, da da da. Some pig. Anyhow, Amazing information here, and we'll go on from there. Y'all have a great day. Like, share, and subscribe. Peace.